Next, we are going for the next slide. Here you can see the introduction and the workflow of building industry. Yeah, hello. What is the syllabus of this course, sir? I'm going to come for that. I'm going to come for that. The last slides we are going to discuss about the complete syllabus. So next you can see the introduction and the workflow of building industry. Introduction and the workflow of building industry. That means whenever you're going to work for any project. So how you're going to initiate your work and how you're going to propose all your devices. This is a main important thing. So for example, you're working as a consultant or you're working as a design engineer. So what are the roles and responsibilities and how we are going to work for any project? This, if you are very clear, then you can able to work for any project. You can see. It can be the industrial, it can be a commercial, it can be a domestic, it can be a residential building or any kind of villa or a venture. So the first thing, whenever, for example, if you are having a dream, okay to make a high rise building so what you are going to do you are going to approach a consultant you are going to meet a consultant what do you mean by consultant nothing but a group of engineers working in a team is called as a consultancy a group of engineers here you'll be finding a people okay from different different backgrounds okay in a consultant company you'll be finding civil engineer you'll be finding a mechanical engineer you'll be finding the interior designer, civil uh, architects, multiple people will you'll be fine. So in a consultancy, we have a group of engineers and this consultancy nowadays we are calling it as an architect. Earlier we used to call it as a, call it as an consultancy, but now we're calling it as an architect because this architect will have the contacts with each and every individual department people. And he will be having a scope to work for all the earlier we used to call it as a consultancy, but now we are calling it as an architect. So initially, whenever you're going to work for any project, what is the first thing you're going to do? You are going to check the soil bearing capacity, which is called as SBC. The structural people can able to understand this very clearly. Soil bearing capacity. For example, I'm proposing a project project for 20 story so if you doesn't know the soil bearing capacity and if you're going to design the complete 20 story building so what happens okay it is waste of time so first we are going to check that the proposed land will have that much amount of soil bearing capacity to withstand that much amount of load if you'll be finding that much amount of capacity then again you are going to proceed for the design area for example if you have done the calculations for the complete 20 story afterwards you have came to know that the soil cannot able to withstand that much amount of load means it is a waste of time so the first thing is to work for the soil test part so these people will see what type of soil it is because we have different different types of soils we have hard soil we have moram soil we have the black cotton soil. Okay, we have different different types of soil. We are going to check what type of soil it is. Again, survey of area. We are going to make a survey. For example, if your site is located nearby to any kind of defense area or any kind of archaeological area, okay, or you'll be finding a project nearby to the airports. So these people will not give you the permit to go for the high rise. Building. So along with that, you are going to check, you're going to make a survey also. And different, different countries, different, different cities and different, different localities will have their own standards. We are going to follow that also. Again, we are going to measure because the land area will always not be in a square shape or rectangle shape. To go with the simple formula, area of rectangle length into breadth. You'll be finding the lines with some different density. Sometimes you'll be finding some 25 sites also. So this people can able to work for the complete area in a very clear way. So the first thing for any project is to check the soil bearing capacity. Next thing is to work with your civil departments. So once the soil bearing capacity is clear, then again, the rule of civil engineer will come into picture. So why should we have a civil engineer in any construction company to design the structure or the skeleton of the building? What is meant by structure? All the load bearing components. Okay, like we have the column, we have beam, we have slabs, we have different, different membranes. So all those things they are going to propose as for the type of load we have in the building. Again, they are going to propose the walls also because we have different, different types of walls. We have parapet wall, we have compound wall, we have partition walls, we have different, different materials also to construct the walls. So these people will guide you what actual type of material you have to use. Again, placement of doors and windows. So as per the ventilation point of you okay as per the orientation of your plan they are going to provide the entrances okay they are going to provide the windows and the ventilators so all this comes under the scope of a civil engineer then again the work of MEP department. So um, MEP stands for the mechanical, electrical, and the plumbing. So this can also be called as building services. So M stands for the mechanical, E for the electrical, P for the plumbing. For example, for example, 
if i am going to make you to sit in a room where you have a temperature of almost like 55 degrees centigrade or if you are in a building where you don't find any kind of proper electrical supply nor any kind of water supply so can you able to survive for the longer time no we cannot so we we as human being okay we need some human comfort levels so that to maintain the human comfort levels we require this mep services what is the human comfort temperature this lies between 22 to 25 to 26 degrees centigrade i can say and as electrical engineer we are going to provide the reliable supply and as a plumbing engineer we are going to provide a continuous water supply also so all these things comes under the mep which we are going to understand in the future classes inshallah next we have the interior design so you will not find the interior designer in every project when you are working with commercial projects when you are working with big projects there only you will be finding the interior designer because this people especially they work for the aesthetic point of view for the beauty point of view when you are working with hospital so there you cannot go as per your own own requirements you have some standards we have some certain rules so these people are much aware about the rules and regulations like which type of color is suitable what type of furniture how to utilize a maximum amount of space all those things they have a bright knowledge as well as a vast knowledge so they are going to propose all those things like wall paints wallpapers furnitures wall ceilings landscaping all these things are proposed by your interior designer then at the last what we have is i think but the miscellaneous department this is extra home and comforts like when you are working with uh, some luxurious villas or any kind of luxurious buildings there you can see you'll be finding the automation like whenever you are going to enter the doors will open whenever you whenever you leave the doors will close the means of your electronic gadgets like your mobile phone taps systems you are going to operate all your appliances so all those things comes under the home automation again we have the building management systems and services so this is a separate area especially when you are working with commercial projects where you have some multiple number of fixtures which you cannot troubleshoot which you cannot operate manually so in that case we are going to use a technology called as building management systems or services so this is actually the area which will help you to maintain and troubleshoot and monitor also so this is a complete flow to work for any project i hope it's very clear regarding that. next you can see the topology of the building surface topology means what especially we are briefing into the mep area so the first thing is to discuss in the mechanical so as a mechanical engineer what is the main objective for example i am working with a construction company so why in a construction company we need a mechanical engineer what are the rules and responsibility the first thing we have a department called as hvac heating ventilation and air conditioning okay many of the electrical engineers will think high voltage alternate current it's false in the mechanical it is actually the heating ventilation and air conditioning so as i have told you that we have to maintain the human comfort temperature which lies between 22 to 25 or 26 degrees centigrade so in order to maintain this we require the centralized air conditioning system so what is meant by air conditioning controlling the properties of air because in air we have different different properties we have humidity we have moisture we have odor we have temperature we have okay different different properties all those things we have to we have to control so the first thing as a mechanical engineer is to find out the heat load calculations we have different different concepts to find out the heat load calculations based upon the cfm requirements you can go in a manual way also or you can go with the softwares or applications also again the basic thing what we have to understand in the mechanical area is the refrigeration concept because this is a basic fundamental thing what we have to understand again the means of psychometric chance we are going to work for the project air distribution system how we are going to distribute the air ventilation system ventilation system we don't require in every project some projects required again the static pressure hydronic system duct sizing hvac software so all these things we are going to work here by using the hvac software different different manufacturing companies are having different different applications so by using those applications we are going to propose all the hvac equipments next you can see the plumbing department nowhere across the complete globe i can say we have a specialization or engineering called as plumbing engineering especially okay the people from the mechanical background or even from electrical background can able to work for the plumbing department earlier almost like some 15 to 20 years back it was a scope of a civil engineer but now because of advancement in the plumbing the fixtures so the rule of mechanical and the electrical engineer is also very very important so as a plumbing 
the first thing is to find out the complete load the complete demand then again we are going to make different different layouts like internal layout external layout the name itself indicate whatever the fixtures which we are going to propose inside the building and nothing but the internal fixtures and whatever the fixtures which we are going to propose outside the building like in the outside area what we have we have the overhead tank we have the underground tank we have the manholes we have sewage lines we have the rain harvesting pits all those things comes under the external layout so why we are just segregating all these things to work in a very simplified way again we have the fire fighting system to provide the safety for your building equipments and property as well as get to us as a false hope this is also a separate area in the plumbing again we have the rain harvesting system to increase the water table safety and health environment because nowadays we are going to work in a very safe as well as a healthy environment so we have some certain things also which we have to learn ourselves to save the environment again the sewage treatment plant if you want to recycle the water if you want to reuse again the same water we are going to treat the water this concept is actually very very important when you are working with say, the projects where there is a water scarcity or a shortage of water you can say so these are the things what we have in the plumbing the last thing what is left is i think but the electrical so as electrical engineer what we are going to do the we are going to work to find out the total connected load this is very very important okay as a electrical engineer first thing is to work to find out the total connected load after which we are going to propose a single line diagram what is meant by single line diagram it will provide you the schematic flow of power like from which point how we are going to propose the supply for different different feeders for different different branches as well as for different different circuits by means of single line diagram you can able to understand the complete concept of your project again we are going to make the layouts like lighting layout drop over layout air conditioning layout air conditioning layout is not a scope of electrical but if there is a requirement of a split ac or window ac we can able to work for the air conditioning also but basically whenever we are going to work for centralized we require a mechanical engineer on the again we have the conduits okay nowadays we are going with concealed wiring also so we are going to pro propose the conduit layout control wiring or the circuit wiring again we have the low current system area where we are going to work with the cctv system and the public cable system so this is a major scope of electrical now we are going to understand in detail about the electrical in the next slides so before going for next if you have any query you can please clarify if everyone please. just out of curiosity um, yes. so electrical are, are we also covering fire alarm or is it under no. fire no 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 it is it okay. is with the, the separate area fire fighting area okay 